Welcome everyone. My name is Moya Magdi Abdel Wahab, a final year medical student and a more scholar. Today I will be talking about the Institutional Review Board approval, or IRP approval for short, and informed consent, which is one of the most important topics for authors. Our learning objectives include overview about Institutional Review Board, Types of clinical studies need institutional review board approval, purposes of informed consent, current problems with informed consent process and forms, different types of informed consent that might be used for studies with genetic materials, and finally, alternative to informed consent. So, what is an institutional review board? An institutional review board is a committee that is responsible for reviewing and approving research studies involving human subjects. The purpose of an RB is to ensure that the rights and welfare of human subjects in research are protected and that the research is conducted in an ethical and responsible manner. It's oversight by National Institute of Health Office of Human Research Protection, based on federal regulation which delegated authority to universities and others. Our next question is, what studies need IRB approval? Any research study that involves the human subjects must receive IRB approval before the study can begin. According to the Federal Regulation Governing Human Subjects Research, a human subject is defined as a living individual about whom an, an investigator, whether profession or student, conducting research obtains data through intervention or interaction with the individual or identifiable private information. Here we are giving you examples of research studies that would require IRB approval, which include first, clinical trials of drugs or medical devices, second, studies that involve surveys, interviews, or focus groups with human participants, third, studies that involve the use of human biological samples or tissue, fourth, studies that involve the collection of data through non-invasive techniques such as observation, video, or audio recordings or physiological measure. Fifth, studies that involve the use of personal information or medical record. And finally, studies that involve vulnerable population such as children, pregnant women, prisoners, or individuals with cognitive impairments. Now, let's move to the second part of our presentation, which is about informed consent. What is the informed consent? The informed consent is a process by which individuals are given information about a research study or medical procedure and are able to make an informed decision about whether or not to participate. Informed consent is an essential ethical principle in research involving human subjects and is also required in medical practice and other areas of health care. The informed consent process typically involves the researcher or health care provider providing information to the individual about the nature of the study or procedure, including the purpose of the study, the risk and benefits of the participation, and the individual rights as participant. The individual is given an opportunity to ask questions and clarify any concerns they may have before making a decision about whether or not to participate. Informed consent is an ongoing process, meaning that individual must be provided with any new information that may affect their decision to continue participating in the study or the procedure. The individual also has the right to withdraw their consent at any time. So we can conclude the purpose of informed consent is to protect the rights and welfare of individuals participating in research or medical procedure by ensuring that they are fully informed about risks, benefits and burdens, also respecting value and choices of participants, deterring research with unacceptable risk, ensuring participants freely choose to enroll and finally ensuring participants know they can withdraw at any time. There are a lot of problems with informed consent, and one of the major ones is that it's often difficult for participants to understand the informed consent form because it may have much scientific and medical language, and the median length of the majority of them is multiple pages. For example, trials looking for HIV treatment often be over 20 pages. The other major problem with informed consent is that many participants 
still have misconception like they believe the study would provide them the optimal clinical care and they tend to minimize the study risk also they believe they need to participate to get the clinical care so these are some suggestions to improve informed consent and solve the problems we face with informed consent first make sure language is readable for people with limited education Second, ensure that the informed consent form conveys key information by testing in a group of people like the study participants. Third, train staff in how to effectively communicate the study information to participants and how to obtain informed consent. Fourth, provide time to participants to review the information provided, ask questions, and make an informed decision about whether or not to participate. And finally, review and evaluate the informed consent process to identify areas for improvement and ensure that it remains effective and ESCAP. Regarding different types of informed consent that might be used for studies with genetic material, there are different levels of consent. So one of that level is specific consent. So if we collect the blood and the consent asked to use that for studies only of diabetes. Also, there is tears consent where the participant choose to refuse consent for future studies unless asked or consent for a broader range of disease outcomes. Also, general consent when they consent to use their blood to study anything you want. There are alternatives to informed consent in some situations a participant can give one, such as an infant or participant has Alzheimer's disease or comatose. So, we can get permission from parents or guardian, if it's child or elder who have a guardian. Or we can get waiver of consent if approved by IRP. This is for minimal risk studies like doing surveys or for studies of emergency intervention where consent isn't possible. Also, it might be deferred which enters a study without consent and we take the consent later. But we can't use this data if they not consented to it. And lastly, perspective like consent from everybody who might potentially have the condition of interest before it happens. These are some resources relevant to our lecture. These are our contacts and thank you for your attention.